Okay, maybe it's time to get back to Slay the Spire. You broke it in a fit of rage last time, remember? Falcon Punch! Oh, right. A few moments later. There we go. Good as new. Okay, y you know what? Let's just move on. Today, I beat the heart with the silent. Actually, this was recorded way before it was uploaded, so it's been several weeks since you beat the heart. Well, I think you get what I mean. Anyways, I already explained what needs to happen in order to get to the heart in my defect video, so if you haven't seen that one or need an explanation of what those steps are, go check that video out here. Let's crack on, shall we? For Niao's blessing, I take a random common relic. A free relic's a free relic, after all. I get the Regal Pillow, which heals me an additional 15 HP whenever I rest at a rest site. That means I won't have to use as many rest sites for healing, which frees me up for upgrades. I speed my way through the first few combats and get to the Burning Elite. Ew, a gremlin knob with metallicize. It gets a little dicey, but through the use of four potions, I'm able to make it through with minimal damage taken. This gets me a Lizard Tail, which will bring me back to half health the first time I take fatal damage. This is nice, since if I get a super unfortunate turn at any point, this will save me. But hopefully I won't have to use it at all. I get to the first chest and get the Matryoshka dolls, which would be really dumb to give up right now. This basically means that even when I take the blue key, I'll still get a relic out of that chest. Plus, who can say no to a BOGO deal? Following that up with an elite fight, I get the Peace Pipe, which will allow me to remove cards at rest sites. Super handy, especially if I ever get a curse. Next elite, and I get the Eternal Feather, which heals me for 3 HP for every 5 cards in my deck just for walking into a rest site. That means I'll have even more opportunities to upgrade and remove cards at rest sites, since I heal just by visiting them. These relics have been awfully good this time around, and I'm still in Act 1. Maybe the game knows I took a break and is giving me a good run just to pull me back in. Or maybe RNGesus is intervening so I can finally get this video done. Whatever the case, things are going really well in the relic department. This allows me to get the red key and walk into the boss with full health. The card department isn't doing quite as well, with the only notable pickup before the first boss being in Venom. However, my deck isn't really built to capitalize on Venom's one poison per hit, so it's not even that good yet. The card reward after the boss changes that. I get the card that I always look for when playing the silent, After Image. This card gives you one block after each card you play. And do you remember what does one damage every time you play a card? That's right! The Beat of Death buff that the heart has. Gold Star sticker for you. Now I just need to get the rest of my deck in order so that I can properly utilize both in Venom and After Image. Act 2 is quite a struggle. Every fight I'm taking chip damage, which forces me to take the path of least resistance. This means no elites, which means no relics, and taking as many rest sites as possible, which means I get to see fewer cards. I even have to heal at a couple of the rest sites, which means I don't get to upgrade as many cards. All said and done though, it ends up turning out okay. I pick up the blue key in the chest, so I'm all set to get to Act 4. With the card rewards I get, I end up leaning into the poison side of the build, picking up Noxious Fumes and Bouncing Flask. I'm also able to use a couple of rest sites to upgrade both in Venom and After Image, which make them both more consistent to play. I notice that the final boss for this act is the Collector, so I decide to pick up the Orange Pellets, which will cleanse all debuffs if you play an attack, skill, and power in the same turn. But then I immediately forget about it and use all of my powers before the Collector puts any debuffs on me. You know, at least you thought about it. And that's what counts, right? Don't patronize me. I manage to just squeak out a victory despite that blunder, pick up Corpse Explosion and the Tiny House, and move on to Act 3. 
going into Act 3, my deck is still kind of a mess. I take damage in pretty much every fight still, so I decide to try and focus on my defense. My first pickup is the Warped Tongs, which upgrade a card in my hand each turn for the rest of that combat. This helps both offense and defense, but is a little unreliable. Still, a great find. I also buy an oddly smooth stone from the first merchant, which gives me one dexterity from now on. One extra block per defensive card might not sound like the best, but it adds up pretty quickly. Moving on to the first marked elite, I get Bottled Fire, which I really didn't need, but decide to put my upgraded Dagger Spray in, since it's my highest damage attack. This turns out to be the best decision I could have made, since I pick up the Akabiko in the chest for this act, making the Dagger Spray deal 28 damage to all enemies on my first turn. And, better yet, I essentially get it for free thanks to the Lantern which I get in the same chest. I have to go into an elite fight next, and I only have 8 HP, but I managed to get through it taking only one point of damage. But for her nearly ending my run, I'm rewarded with the Mummified Hand, which makes a random card in my hand cost zero for a turn whenever I play a power. This will make playing any of my powers even easier, since I essentially don't lose anything for playing a power now. One rest site later, and I go from 7 HP to 58. Nice. Next elite, and I get the Bag of Marbles, which makes the first Dagger Spray now do an insane 42 damage. The Transient didn't even stand a chance, which makes me feel much better than I was feeling at the beginning of Act 3. And now I gotta deal with the Time Eater, who is not the boss I wanted to see. I was hoping for Donu and Dekka, since I could just put Corpse Explosion on one of them, and that would take care of the other one. But, nevertheless, I come out on top. Act 4 time. At the rest site, I use the Peace Pipe to remove a normal defense since at this point I have more effective block cards. I pick up a Dexterity Potion and Acrobatics from the shop for extra survivability and card draw for the heart. After all, I should be able to skip the shield and spear fight with this smoke bomb I brought with me. Wait, I can't even use it? Ugh, I've wasted a potion slot holding onto this for how long now, and it doesn't even work unless I kill one of them? At that point, the hard part is over and I might as well kill the other one and get my relic. Corpse Explosion makes it even easier to finish the second one off because they both have about the same health. Whatever, I guess Act 4 is lactose intolerant with how much it hates cheese. The rewards were extremely worth it though, so I guess I'm glad I wasn't able to skip it. I get the Kunai, which I'm pretty sure I've gotten every run I've beaten the heart so far, and will help my defenses scale throughout the heart fight. Bane is also great, allowing me to do 20 damage with a single card. I'm feeling pretty good heading into the heart. My lizard tail hasn't been used yet, and I'm relatively healthy after the previous fight, but if there's any fight that would eat straight through all of that, it's this fight. I'm able to get after image and Envenom out turn 1, so the beat of death won't be an issue until it gets buffed, and I can start building poison immediately. The heart gives me all the status cards and puts all the debuffs on me, but I'm actually able to utilize the orange pellets properly this time, so I cleanse all of them immediately. You know, maybe I should have just said that's why I bought them in the first place. Then I would have looked smart instead of dumb. Well, honesty is the best policy, right? An underrated part of this build that I've failed to mention thus far is weak. If it wasn't for Sucker Punch and Neutralize, I'm pretty sure I would have died 10 times by now. So that, plus the dexterity scaling I now have, will allow me to stay pretty safe during this fight and build up my poison. However, poison takes time to work, and the heart is only getting stronger. I have to use my speed potion to prevent myself from dying outright, even with weak stacked up on the heart. But the heart already has 62 poison, and between that and the damage I'm able to put into it, I kill it without even needing to use the lizard tail.
Wait, no dramatic ending? No suspense? Well, okay, I figure at this point you know I'm going to win, so there's no point making it suspenseful. After all, I wouldn't be breaking down this run if I just died at the end. That would be super boring and anticlimactic. So yeah, that's three out of four characters done. All that's left is the Watcher. How hard could that possibly be? Every time someone subscribes to the Battery Games channel, a monitor is saved from a violent gamer. Please, save a monitor and subscribe now. As a thank you, you'll receive all of the Battery Games videos sent directly to your subscription feed at no additional cost. Thank you, from us and all the monitors you will save with your subscriptions.